As long as I can remember, I've wanted to sing. But it turned out not everybody loved the sound of my voice as much as my mum did. And I got teased and bullied. It was a seemingly endless drama full of singing and violence. <laughs> The story of Warren Chance is the story of Paul Potts, who was a cell phone salesman living in Portalba, Wales. This boy has a, a marvelous, beautiful voice, but he just doesn't know how to reach his goals, how to, to get what he, what he really wants. You know, it's, it's, it's the story of his, his, his uh, struggle to, to, to fulfill his dream. And initially I thought it would be the story of, of when he won Britain's Got Talent, but it's not, it's the story before that of him growing up in a, in a small town with this passion for opera that no one really understands. And then he meets this girl, this woman that is a complete powerhouse behind him and gets behind him and understands him. This is not a film about a guy who won Britain's Got Talent. This is a film about a boy from an industrial steel town who dreams of being a singer and through endless adversity ultimately succeeds and that's how they sold it to me and I was like oh you're right like because your first instinct is this sounds like a terrible idea <laughs> and um, and then when you read it you're like oh it's no it's not the film that was in my head you know you have had your great adventure but this is your life now it's true, Pavarotti. He's nothing but a Vingita with a comb over. What is that? Some talent competition where the best performer in Britain gets £100,000. Do it! Toss a coin. Heads on press send. Tails, we forget all about it. It's mind-boggling, to be honest. I, I, I love what I do, and, I, and, and yet, and, you know, and that, that makes me very fortunate. To have this happen makes me even more fortunate. And, um, you know, it's, it's only because of the support that people have given me over the last six years that, um, that anything like this is happening. And I have to say, when, when I read the script, I was huge, very pleasantly surprised by how, how good and moving and, and um, the, the, the kind of humour that was, that was in the story. I mean, you don't expect that. Um, in a, in a, I don't know, for some reason, a, a real-life story, you don't sort of expect that kind of, you know, really kind of great humour and, and uh, great characters. When I first read it, it's the first scene, the first date that they have um, in a train station. Um, when I read it, I knew that I had to do it and I knew that I, I, you know, I'd give it a good go. Well, it was the director, really. It was, it was David and, and Harvey and uh, they, they really sold it to me. I was so surprised that I, I, I knew that the finish, the, the ending was great because the ending was his audition and I knew how powerful that was. And, and the build up to that ending was equally good. And so there are two elements that you have to say yes when you read a screenplay that good. I thought you two only met this morning. Nonsense. How could I be his girlfriend if we've only just met? No, it turns out that all the time we thought he was up there on his computer looking at pornography he was actually emailing this lovely thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him blushing now. Could you just eat him up? You'd need a couple of sittings. What do I want them to take away? I don't know. I hope they have a lovely time. I hope they find it a little bit funny and a little bit emotional and, uh, and very, very uplifting. The idea that, that Paul's, you know, embodies through his life is don't give up. It's amazing. I love the movie. It's, the message is exactly on point. It's exactly what I wanted it to say. It's the kind of um, uplifting story that leaves you feeling good about yourself and about the world and humanity. And, you know, it's kind of like, yes. It's, it's, it's like, I guess, how Obama felt when he first said, yes, we can. So you've shattered your collarbone, broken four ribs and dislocated your pelvis. You have got to stop doing this to me.